Today, Russian President Vladimir Putin eyes the contours of a Trump peace plan. As the G20 summit wraps, world leaders begin to prepare for Donald Trump diplomacy. His latest cabinet picks, world wrestling entertainment co-founder Linda McMahon and Dr. Oz. And Trump's criminal conviction faces an uncertain future. It's Wednesday, November 20th. This is Reuters World News, bringing you everything you need to know from the front lines in 10 minutes, every weekday. I'm Christopher Waljasper in Chicago. And I'm Carmel Crimmins in Dublin. We're starting with a Reuters exclusive. According to multiple sources with knowledge of the Kremlin's thinking, Russian President Vladimir Putin is open to discussing a Ukraine ceasefire deal with U.S. President-elect Donald Trump. Putin's willingness to talk, however, comes with a set of preconditions. Europe editor Rachel Armstrong joins us now. Sources in Russia who have spoken to our Moscow bureau chief Guy Falkenbridge say that the Kremlin would be open to talks to end the war in Ukraine. But any deal that Russia would be willing to counter would involve the conflict being frozen roughly along the front lines as they stand. Russia would be very reluctant to seize much of the territory that it has taken. And Russia would also want to see the idea of Ukraine ever joining NATO being put to bed. Russia is also aware that as part of any deal, Ukraine would be pushing for some kind of security guarantee to stop a war from breaking out again. What has Ukraine said? Ukraine has not commented on those reports. President Vladimir Zelensky has always been very clear that he would not be willing to cede any territory as part of discussions to end the war. These developments come at a very tense juncture, given the first firings of Atakums into Russian territory and Putin approving a new nuclear doctrine that lowers the threshold for a nuclear strike. So on the one hand, Russia is upping the nuclear ante, but on the other hand, it's saying that the strike we saw yesterday caused no damage at all. And I think that's quite interesting because Putin, on the one hand, will need to appease the very hardliners in Russia who want an incredibly robust response to what the West has done. But he also wants to be in a position where he can talk to Donald Trump's camp without having antagonized the situation further. So it, it, it's an interesting balancing act that Putin has to play right now. Donald Trump has selected three more cabinet officials. Wall Street veteran Howard Lutnick will be his next Commerce Secretary. Celebrity doctor Mehmet Oz is Trump's pick to run the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. And for Secretary of Education, former pro wrestling CEO Linda McMahon. Trump has proposed abolishing the Education Department, but would likely need congressional approval to do so. Donald Trump joining Elon Musk in Texas for the test launch of SpaceX's sixth Starship test flight. That's the ship that is now uh, going around the Earth. Musk showing Trump the 400-foot-tall rocket system designed to one day land on the moon and carry manned missions to Mars. Musk has complained that regulations by the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration have slowed progress to a future Mars mission. Republicans have introduced a House bill aimed at blocking the first openly transgender member of Congress from using women's bathrooms. South Carolina Representative Nancy Mace introduced the bill prohibiting House members and employees from using bathrooms, quote, other than those corresponding to their biological sex. The bill comes just weeks after the election of Delaware Democrat Sarah McBride to the House. McBride will be the first openly transgender member of Congress. A no fairy tale ending for 38 year old Rafael Nadal. His tennis career drew to a close in defeat on Tuesday night. The 22 time Grand Slam champion bowed out of the Davis Cup in Spain after losing to Dutchman Botic van der Sansolp.
AI giant NVIDIA reports results later today. NVIDIA stands out among competitors and is considered an indicator of the overall health of the AI economy. Tech reporter Stephen Nellis will be watching. Probably the biggest risk to NVIDIA in the long term is that its biggest and most sophisticated customers at creating AI systems are also actually developing their own internal competitors. So if you look at companies like Google and Amazon and Microsoft, they are all developing their own chips that could eventually replace NVIDIA. But right now, there's no indication that those efforts are really taking a huge bite out of next year's business. And sticking with AI, we're all about it on this week's episode of Reuters Econ World. We're looking at how we deal with machines that are smarter than us in the not too distant future. You can catch it on Reuters.com, the Reuters app, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. While Donald Trump prepares for the next four years of his administration, one matter may remain in limbo until the end of his term. The sentencing for his criminal conviction over a hush money payment to an adult film star. A judge has paused all proceedings ahead of next week's scheduled sentencing. Trump's said the case should be dismissed now that he's been elected to a second term. Luke Cohen has been covering the case in Manhattan. So Luke, what's behind the prosecutor's request to pause the case? So prosecutors really had a dilemma here, which is that Trump had been convicted, but he had not yet been sentenced. Then when he won the election, the prosecutors really had to decide, what do we do here? Because on the one hand, a jury has convicted him. They have respect for that. And on the other hand, they have said in court filings that they deeply respect the office of the president. And they were concerned that any possible sentence could have somehow impeded with Trump's ability to govern. So how might this all play out? I, I think this removes pretty much all doubt as to whether or not the sentencing will go forward before Trump is inaugurated. And then as to how the judge rules on Trump's motion to dismiss the case eventually, I think is is anyone's guess. He could side with the district attorney and say, look, it's not fair to expect the president to deal with this case while he is president. So I will pause it. But he was duly convicted by a jury. There's certainly a world in, in which Trump could face sentencing in this case after leaving office. That said, his lawyers have vowed to appeal this verdict altogether. So while it's certainly possible that Trump would face sentencing after leaving office, it's not at all guaranteed. International relations are getting trickier. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz saying geopolitical tensions are having an impact on this year's G20 summit in Rio de Janeiro. The impending return of Donald Trump as US president has world leaders bracing for drama. And one of his top allies, Argentine President Javier Millet, gave them an early taster at the meeting. Brad Haynes is our Brazil bureau chief and is in Rio. This is the group of the world's 20 biggest economies. And that just naturally, that makes it very hard to speak with a common voice, which is why the great feat of the G20 every year is, is arriving at any joint statement. But that consensus was almost derailed at the last minute when Argentine President Javier Millet, who was coming off of a meeting at Mar-a-Lago with a newly elected Trump, he was the first foreign minister to meet with Trump since his election, and he came in to the G20 spoiling for a fight. So even before he arrived, these Argentine negotiators, they were in the room with all of their peers from the G20, trying to hammer out this joint statement. And all of a sudden, one of them says, we got a call from the Argentine president, and we've got a much harder position. They, they started drawing red lines on a series of these issues. And it was very clear that Millet was coming to send a message. He decried joint statements, calls for progressive taxation, gender equality, an embrace of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. And you could hear echoes of the Trump agenda coming back to the center of global affairs. A spokesman for Millet didn't respond to a request for comment about the summit. Today's recommended read offers insights on Chinese President Xi Jinping's diplomatic tour of South America. 
It's highlighting Beijing's growing clout in the region, as well as how it's filling the vacuum left by the US presidential transition. A link to the story is in the pod description. We'll be back tomorrow with our daily headline show. For more on any of the stories you heard today, check out Reuters.com or the Reuters app. And to make sure you never miss an episode, follow on your favorite podcast player or download the Reuters app.